Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to teach you how to catch crappie at your local lake marina on uh, vertical jigging brush piles. This is a great way to uh, catch a lot of really good fish. Um, crappie are really fun to catch. They're fairly easy to catch and they're really good eating. So um, if you're interested in catching crappie, uh, jigging boat slips and stuff on brush piles, then stay tuned because uh, I'm going to try to teach you everything I know uh, in a few minutes on um, basically everything from the gear I use all the way down to the technique I use jigging. So stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoy it. The reason you want a small reel is uh, you're holding small line capacities. I mean, you're dropping down a maximum of like 15 to 20 feet, so you don't need a huge reel. And uh, the lighter you can go, the more you can feel. So basically, it's just a comfort thing too. Just walking around all day, you don't want a giant heavy reel that's big and clunky. You want a small profile, um, super light reel that holds um, small diameter fluorocarbon. All right, guys, moving on to the line. The best line I love to use is eight pound fluorocarbon. Specifically, Sunline. A little bit of stretch, but not too much. You feel a lot of the bites. The line memory is one issue, but that's an issue with all fluorocarbon, so it's not a big deal. These crappie uh, sometimes can be pretty picky, especially in the colder months. Um, so I, I like to go, I'll go down to six pound if I need to, but I like to stay right at eight pound. Um, it seems to work the best all around. All right, guys, moving on to the rod. I'm using a Browning Micro Light. 4.9. I love short rods, especially when you're walking around the docks. They're easy to maneuver, um, easy to get up under boat slips, and uh, kind of maneuver around the brush piles you're going to be fishing. So I'd say the short is like four and a half feet. So four six, four six to about five and a half. That's about the length it starts getting kind of clunky. Also, a lot of the brush piles you're fishing are going to be directly under boats, so you need a shorter rod so you can set the hook. Um, if you have a longer rod, every time you try to set the hook, you're going to set the hook into the boat, and it's going to result in breaking tips and uh, breaking rods. So, um, again, I'm just a fan of super short rods. Um, they're easy to maneuver and easy to get hook sets on. And again, it's another weight thing. It just the lighter you can go, the less gear you have on your rod, the more you can feel, and the more comfortable it is to fish. So, um, I'd say pack as light as you possibly can go. Uh, just depending on your situation or your uh, financial status too. Again, um, these crappie rods don't have to be super expensive. I mean, you can get away with a $40 combo easily. Um, but again, just like everything else in bass fishing and everything else, the more you spend, uh, the more comfortable you're going to be fishing. Okay, guys, moving on to the jig head. Um, personally, I love to use um, 1 8 ounce jig heads just because of the fact that they get they get the bait down there. One thing you'll notice if you ever do this, when you're fishing fluorocarbon, there's a lot of line memory. And if you're using like 1 16th or lighter, those coils won't go out. If you're using two 1 8 ounce rigs like I do, um, line memory won't be a problem in feeling your bites. Again, this is just preference, but personally I run a double 1 8 ounce rig and it has caught me fish everywhere. So um, there's no reason to change for me. I use a chartreuse head. Um, you can use lead heads. Um, I just found that I get a few more bites using colored heads and I'd say 1 32nd to 1 8th ounce will get the job done just depending on where you're at and uh, how deep the fish are and again if they're fishing 15 to 20 feet you probably want to run at least 1 8th but these crappie like these small profile baits so I try to keep it as light as I can but these 1 8th still catch fish so I keep using them. Okay guys, now moving on to crappie baits. My favorite all-time bait is the Bobby Garland Baby Shad and Electric Chicken. This bait is phenomenal and has caught me fish every lake I've gone to. The key thing, I think, is the Electric Chicken. Um, it's pink on the bottom, chartreuse on the top. Um, and if you've seen my other videos, I'll put a link down to below. Um, my last vlog, vlog number four of me crappie fishing, I used my hand-tied jig. And... Um, that was my version of the electric chicken color. Basically the same thing, chartreuse with the pink. Um, just a great all-around soft plastic. You can go any kind of bright chartreuse color, or you can go more realistic, um, kind of silver, black, white, uh, that kind of thing. So, again, this is probably the most unimportant part, but this changes wherever you're at. So, I mean, sometimes you want a more realistic. Um, sometimes you want... 
kind of this. This is a great springtime bait, for example, but in the fall, crappie might prefer more realistic, so you might switch over to like a silver, um, kind of a translucent, like a white. Um, so, again, this one just really varies depending on where you're at and which the fish at your lake prefer. All right, guys, just like I have tied on right now, this is a double jig rig, or a officially known as a tandem rig. I never crappie fish without this. My view on it is why not put two baits on if you can, you have double the chance of catching a fish. Another thing is crappie are really finicky with their depth, so you have like a one foot kind of cushion um, on where you're fishing at. So one of your jigs is in the strike zone and one of them is either higher or lower than you would normally want your jig. Um, it just depends. So uh, I definitely tie this. You can use any knots you like, but I just like using an improved clinch knot. It's really easy, um, really easy to get a big tag end. A lot of people use the polymer knot on their top jig and then whatever knot they want on the bottom jig. Tying the top one on first because if you use the polymer knot, you have a huge tag end or it's really easy to make a big tag end. So um, that's kind of a key thing um, to think about before you start tying them on. All right guys, now you know what to use. Uh, while you're crappie fishing, I'm gonna go into some techniques I use to uh, catch crappie um, in different times of the year. So this is probably the most important part besides your gear. Um, your gear can affect the fish a little bit, but how you fish it is probably the most important part and the most important tips I can give you. Hope you enjoyed uh, my gear segment and uh, stay tuned for uh, some techniques on how to catch crappie all year round. Okay guys, so a lot of people when they think about crappie fishing, they think of jigging because they see uh, kind of the videos up north, um, ice fishing and stuff like that and they see him doing a lot of like popping and jigging and stuff. Well, I think a big, a big key to how I fish is doing the exact opposite of that. A lot of the times I try to keep the bait as still as possible and just have that realistic movement of that bait and that bait fish is idling. Maybe in the springtime when the crop are more active and they're spawning and stuff, I might eventually give it like a pop every once in a while, but a lot of the times I'm just dead sticking it. All right guys, I'd say probably the most important part about um, fishing in a marina is finding the brush piles. This can be very difficult if you uh, are not familiar with the marina you're fishing in. Um, but me being a member of this marina for probably around five years now, um, I've kind of learned where the brush piles are at. For example, no one would be able to walk up to the slip and know that there's three brush, brush piles in it. Um, but if you use this tip I'm about to tell you, see that rope, that green rope right there? That, for example, is a brush pile. Moving on to the other side of the slip, that green rope right there is a brush pile. Going up under the dock, that blue rope right there is a brush pile. That's the most important tip I can tell you about this whole entire thing, is uh, finding the brush piles. If you can walk around each boat slip and find those ropes like that, that is a huge key. Basically what you're doing is you're fishing these suspended brush piles so we're right now in about 30 foot of water. That brush pile right there is 12 foot down, and this one right here is 8 foot down. The only reason I know that is because this is my old boat slip and we sunk those ourselves. So um, basically you just want to fish those suspended fish around those brush piles. Um, it's a really fun way. It's super easy. And uh, I'm going to show you some techniques I use uh, fishing these brush piles, exactly how I do it. Using my other tip I told you about dead sticking and uh, finding the brush pile. So you put dead sticking and finding the brush pile together and you will produce crappie. All right guys, so imagine that brush pile hanging straight down from that rope. Now what you want to do is you want to fish in a circular motion around that brush pile. The best you can do on these is only go halfway around the circle because of the fact that the other half is under the dock. Um, the further you can get up under, the more likely that that is unfished. So chances are you'll get a bite if you go where uh, a normal a person would go. Alright guys, so just like this. All you want to do is just slowly dead stick it, just like I was saying earlier, and just slowly move this rod around this brush pile. Sometimes it can be hard to keep it still, but usually the more still you can keep it, uh, the more you're going to get fit. Now how I was saying earlier, in springtime, you might want to speed it up a little bit. Uh, you can go a little bit faster or pop it uh, once or twice in between every once in a while. Guys, well, another key ingredient to catching crappie is the depth you're fishing. Um, if you're fishing at the wrong depth, you're definitely not going to catch those fish. Uh, crappie feed in an upwards motion, so this, usually the, sh the shallower you are, the better off you are. Um, 
once you get to those deeper depths, like 12, like 18 feet, uh, it can be pretty tricky because if you get it below the fish, they just won't see it. Uh, crappie, their eyes are morely on the top of their head, so um, usually you want to get that bait right above them because they feed in that upwards motion, so uh, that's a big key in crappie fishing. All right, guys, real quick, I'm going to show you how I measure my depths. Um, all I do is I just uh, flip my bail over and I hold my rod as high as I can up in the air. Um, again, a lot of the times I imagine uh, how high a basketball goal is. A regulation basketball goal is 10 feet in the air. So I just imagine like I'm going to be touching um, the rim of a basketball goal with my rod tip. And uh, that usually gets me to the ballpark around 10 foot. Um, from there, I'll go shallow if I need to, down to 8, uh, down to 6. Or guys, another way you can uh, kind of estimate how deep you're fishing is you can use your rod length. Um, I know, for example, my rod is 4 foot 9. So if I double that, I'm around 9.5 foot um, somewhere in there. So just depending on your rod length, get familiar with how long your rod is and either double it or triple it or uh, use your rod length, it doesn't matter, but um, you can kind of use that as a, uh, a ruler um, of measuring how deep you're going to be fishing. Alright guys, a key way I love to work these slips is uh, working them in the V shape. Um, see how this slip is pointed uh, down to a V? A lot of the times the brush pile will be right at the point right there, um, just like this one is. I'll show you. Right, I'm going to drop my GoPro in the water. Um, that that rope right there um, that's the brush pile so a lot of the times what I like to do is I will um, drop down out in the middle right there and then I'll work my jig all the way up to that brush pile right in front of it and I'll stop it after I stop it I'll start working one side and I'll slowly work my way that way just dead sticking it barely moving it then I'll cut all the way across to this side and then I'll work back down uh, to that brush pile and I'll do that a few times if I'm not getting bit I'll move out in the center like that some of the times they won't want it on the sides and they'll want it out in the middle out there sometimes the crappie will just be roaming out there um, out in the middle of the slip kind of pushed off the brush pile a lot of they're not going to always be up tight so you got to kind of change it around uh, change it up and uh, sometimes they prefer different things so again this is all about uh, changing it up Different crappie are going to react different in different states, different lakes, different water temperatures. Everything's different. So um, the temperature I'm fishing right now is not going to be the same as probably what you're fishing. So change it up a little bit. Go slower. Speed it up. Um, jig it every once in a while. Jig it a little bit more than you normally would. Um, these crappie are pretty finicky, so sometimes they prefer different things. Um, again, this is just a basics, guys. This is not a uh, spitting image like a guide on literally how to catch them this is how i catch them so i'm just making this video just in case you kind of live in the same uh situation as i do um maybe it'll work for you maybe it won't but um hopefully this gives you an idea of how to fish these um again so just work them in a v-shape sometimes they'll want it just sitting on the brush pile so you can just sit with your rod tip deadly on the brush pile and not moving it um Sometimes they want it moving around, they want to chase it. Um, again, just play with the crappie, change it up, and uh, see what happens. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you, you learned something from this video. I tried to teach as much as I knew, um, kind of in a short time. It's kind of hard to explain over a video. I wish I could show you in person, but um, this is the best I can do. So thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up. Whether you learned uh, kind of what gear to use or uh, some techniques, um, Please give it a thumbs up, it really helps my channel out, subscribe, and uh, comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching, stay tuned to my channel, and catch y'all next time.